విషోదయం ఛానల్ కు స్వాగతం రామాయణం పార్ట్ నైన్ వన్ డే సీత రిసెంట్ ఫ్రమ్ హర్ బ్యాత్ ఇన్ ద రివర్ అండ్ జాయిన్ ద బ్రదర్స్ అట్ ద సైడ్ అరౌండ్ అట్ సైడ్ దర్ హట్ చాచింగ్ అబౌట్ దిస్ అండ్ దట్ ద డో హు హ్యాడ్ రీసెంట్లీ గివెన్ బర్త్ నియర్ బై ద బెస్ట్ టైమ్ టు పిక్ ద బిల్వ ఫ్రూట్ ఫ్రమ్ ద ట్రీ బై ద హట్ హౌ దే మై కీప్ దెమ్ సెల్ఫ్ ఫార్మ్ అండ్ డ్రైవ్ ఇన్ ద రెయిన్ స్కీమ్ సీత లుక్ at her handsome husband and thought how lucky she was to love a man like that and how his love in return lakshmana too was a fine fine man and again she thanked the gods for all the good things she had even though she was a princess who had lived in the forest for 14 years sita was not the only one admiring rama at the moment hidden in the trees nearby stood a rakshasa her name was Surpanaka, and she too gazed at Rama with love in her eyes. She noticed his strong arms, his broad shoulders and powerful chest, his long firm legs. She was dazzled by his clear forehead, his bright eyes shaped like the petals of a lotus, his eyebrows dark as a crow's wing. Shurpanaka had never seen such an attractive man before and because she was a rakshasi who lived freely and by her own rules in the forest she decided that she wanted him for herself she burst through the trees and banged up to where rama sat with his wife and his brother all at once it seemed as if the sun had been swallowed by a dark cloud the breeze dropped and there was a great hush in the air My name is Surpanaka and this forest is my playground. I go when, wherever I want and I do whatever I please. I want you to be mine, she said in a harsh voice. I don't care who you are or where you have come from. Rama looked at Surpanaka completely unperturbed. He took in his her vast size, her gaping mouth filled with large teeth, her rough hair that hung down on either side of her face her drooping belly and her sharp yellow nails calmly he told her who he was and why he is in the forest come away with me she begged and hurled at her massive arms to him i am in love with you but a married man replied rama standing protectively in front of in front of sita who was shaking like a leaf in storm If you want a companion why don't you ask my brother Lakshmana he's available at the moment this is not the time to be mischievous rama shouted lakshmana his sword already drawn in and in his hands this woman is dangerous look at her she's a wild thing from the forest at the very moment shurpakana lunged towards sita her clawed hands grabbing the air her huge mouth open as if Uh, to swallow the delicate princess in single gulp as sita collapsed in a faint behind him rama reached his bow yelling cut off her nose and ears lakshmana now let me kill her rama cried lakshmana no no shouted rama in response she is a woman lakshmana swore viciously to the air away from behind the hidden sand bouncing of his blade In an instant, Surpakana was covered in dark blood, almost black, that spattered from her nose and the sides of her face. She howled in pain and charged back into the forest, tearing off the low, hanging branches from the trees, trampling on the flowering bushes and crushing plants, and sweet-scented grass into the ground as she ran. As her howls receded, the forest breeze seemed to breathe again. The birds twittered nervously. The breeze returned in gusts. as if unsure whether the danger has passed and the rare sweet song rose again i'm sure that's not the last we have seen of this said lakshmana as he wiped the rakshas's blood off his sword the princess the, the prince says to white sita sprinkling uh, water on her face and rubbed the soles of her feet they took her into the cool dim interior of the hut trying to erase the memory of the last few moments sita clung to rama still trembling and rama whispered words of love and reassurance into her shell-like ears lakshmana bowed to their weapons and steadied his mind to recall all the vishwamitra he had taught 
when they were young. Boys about how to how to power the bows and arrows and spears and swords and shields with the energy of God.